Hello everybody, how are you? This is Enrique of Spanish United, founder and director. Uh, today I want to talk about various issues about the Hispanic community. One of the issues has to do with um, <sighs> the social problems that I see in the Hispanic community. Um, one of the social problems that I see from the Hispanic community is uh, drug abuse, alcoholism, but primarily alcoholism is a major issue in the Hispanic community. And unfortunately, that is the drug of choice. Usually it's the cheapest and the most affordable drug of choice. And it is causing a lot of detrimental problems within the Hispanic community. And that's one of the reasons why the Hispanic community is the way that it is, because of alcoholism. And if anyone has noticed that, if you look at Hispanic neighborhoods, um, there's more liquor stores and bars um, and um, clubs, adult stores and smoke shops than you have recreation centers, community centers, um, uh, tutoring centers, or even hospitals or, or schools. Not only that, but the majority of those establishments are not owned by Hispanic people. They're either owned by Asians or people from the Middle East. Um, I think it's done deliberately on purpose to poison the minds of Hispanic people so that way they waste their money on things that they don't need while you have um, Asians and Middle Eastern people and South Asians that are becoming filthy rich by sending their children to university, what are Hispanics doing? They're burying their children prematurely. Many of them are dying young. If it's not because of homicide or Hispanic on Hispanic or Latino, Latino violence, they're dying primarily because they're drinking themselves to death. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's right. I think it's immoral, and I think it's disgusting that our people make so many excuses. Why Why am I going to go to college? Why am I going to invest in a college fund? Why am I going to invest in myself? Why am I going to do this? Do this? I want to live now, live for the moment, and then they then they complain later. Why am I broke? Why don't I own a home? Why don't I own anything? And part of it has to do with the mentality and the way that they think. Uh, Hispanics like to waste their money on things that they don't need. Uh, they will take out loans for a quinceanera, which is a one-day event, but they will not take out a loan to get a home or to um, to get a rough IRAs or um, to invest in assets because um, clothing and material things come and go. Fashions come and go. Fats come and go. But you can give a lot by investing yourself and especially passing on that generational wealth from yourself to your children, to your children's children, children's children, etc. That's what many communities are doing in America that have been here for even less time than Hispanic people have. Asians, South Asians, Middle Eastern people, Eastern Europeans, etc., even Africans from from Africa. You know, they have um, a wealth that not even Hispanic people have that have been here for generations. And even recent immigrants that are Hispanic, it's like, you know, they continue that cycle of of, of poverty. Um, you know, it's something that we need to think about. Because why is it that we're the only group of people that we are the largest minority? We outnumber pretty much other communities of color, as they say, but yet we are among the poorest to the point that we're even at par of African Americans when it comes to not only poverty, but uh, domestic violence, sexual abuse, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, mass incarceration, gang affiliation, um, many social problems that are pretty much evident in our society that Hispanics don't want to talk about. And 
I see that it has to do not only with the parents failing their children, but it's also the community, um, the religious leaders, the political leaders, the civil leaders, the business leaders, the community leaders have let everyone down in the Hispanic community. And that's the reason why our communities are fading away. They either just stay as slums or barrios, as, as they call them, or they become gentrified where you have other ethnicities or races that move in, the property probably goes up, and then a lot of Hispanics are forced to move out of their neighborhoods, which they have been living there for, for decades. I'm seeing that in parts of East Los Angeles, where you have a lot of uh, ethnic Chinese that are from neighboring Monterey Park that are moving into um, into uh, East LA, and they're gentrifying many parts of East LA that are now becoming predominantly Chinese. Same thing with uh, Harlem, um, Spanish Harlem, for example, many parts of Chicago, many parts of Miami, Orlando, pretty much areas where you have a lot of Hispanics have become gentrified either by uh, ca Caucasians, Asians, etc. And the problem is, is that many Hispanics are forced are being forced to live among African Americans. Many Hispanics do not want to be around African American people. They just don't. And unfortunately, uh, and again, this is no offense or disrespect to the Afri African American community. There's a lot of Hispanic um, African Americans that are, you know, decent, productive, educated people. But the subculture of the African I mean, African American community has not been productive. It has caused a lot of damage to their community you know they have their own baggage you know we can't as a, as a hispanic community be taking the baggage of other people especially those that have it much worse than than we do and unfortunately you have a lot of hispanics that are emulating uh the subculture of the african americans the the hip-hop culture the gang culture the uh the um you know the the way that they dress, the way that they speak, the way they carry themselves. Um, it causes Hispanic people not to be evolved. And um, and the same thing goes with Hispanics that, for example, live in the rural areas of the South and the Midwest that have adopted many of the uh, racist uh, attitudes of many uh Caucasian Americans that are low class, that are, um, I don't want to say the word, but they're pretty much what's called the, uh, the, the country bunkin people, not to say the other word, to be more respectful, you know, which is drinking, uh, complaining, um, not being productive. And, uh, I just feel that, uh, you know, Hispanics uh, have to stop taking sides where they either want to assimilate into uh, the subculture of the white people and the subculture of, of the black people. We have our own culture, a rich culture and traditions that we've had for almost 500 years since the founding of, of the Spanish Empire by Christopher Columbus in 1492. Uh, we have given so much. We have contributed in the arts and entertainment and music. But also, um, I want to see more Hispanics contribute in the fields of science, in the fields of academia, in the fields of invention, innovation. Because Hispanics are just seen as people that are uninvolved, uneducated, uh, no values, uh, destitute immigrants, or just um, people that just live in urban slums where they don't move move forward. Um, you know, th this is something that we really need to ask ourselves as a people instead of complaining, oh, those people have it better than us. Those people have this, those people have that. And having this jealousy and anger and resentment it is true, there is racism, there is hispanophobia, there is an animosity, 
towards Hispanic people for the longest time. But however, a lot of that has to do with the way we behave, the way we act, the way we portray ourselves, and also the environment that the that we are raising our our children in. Um, unfortunately, um, um, Hispanics are not seen in a positive light, and I don't really see Hispanics condemning uh, the subculture of our people, which is very toxic, very negative. Uh, let it be machismo, let it be the gang culture, the the cholo lowrider culture, the uh, the urban hip hop styles of the Puerto Ricans of New York, um, the the Dominicans of New York, or the elitist fascist uh, Cubans that are fanatically anti-communist, anti everything that has to do with Fidel Castro, etc. Um, you know, we need to reach a common ground where we need to re-examine ourselves, examine our communities, and ask ourselves an honest question. What are we doing wrong that our people have not evolved, they stayed where they are, they haven't moved up, but yet uh, we're being exploited by every single race, every single ethnicity, and even those that are recent immigrants. You know, it's like we can't we can't live in this bubble that uh, is not my problem, is not my problem, is not my problem, is not my problem. Because unfortunately, every time there's a social problem within our community, it affects all of us. And it is a representation of an entire people. And unfortunately, uh, we have a representation of our people that is not positive, is very negative. And uh, we need to stop pushing it under the carpet and address it and to brainstorm and come up with long-term solutions and how to deal with these problems. Um, you know, not every problem is a one-size-fits-all. But I, I do believe that if we have an honest discussion and instead of throwing mud at each other and, you know, calling each other names and playing the victim, I think we need to come up with solutions on how we can provide for our own people, not just for our families, but also for our neighbors, for our friends, for the wider community, because many communities that have had social problems in the past, like many, for example, many uh, Eastern Europeans, uh, like Polish, uh, the former Yugoslavia, um, Southern Europeans, like like uh, Italians, Greeks. Um, you have the you had the Irish you had the Irish immigrants, German immigrants, etc. But over time, uh, not only did they assimilate into the dominant culture, but at the same time, they have come up with uh, ways of providing for the community by giving back. Like every single uh, ethnicity that is not Hispanic, they have community centers, cultural centers for their people, where not only, only they keep the people um, busy with cultural events and language, but also they provide social services. Like many uh, cultural centers in America, unfortunately, um, not very, not many of them are run by Hispanics. It's like you don't have too many Hispanics that are investing in making cultural centers and community centers for our youth to keep the youth out of trouble, to keep them productive, to keep them in the right track. And if they have any type of problems at home, so that way they could reach out to them, speak to them, provide uh, social services, because there's a lot of Hispanic kids that could have been saved if people just merely cared to just talk to them, listen to them, and to find out what they could do to help instead of passing judgment and looking down on them like they're just coming society. Uh, unfortunately, we have too many of our youth that are getting killed by the police, 
or even by our, even by our, even by our own people it's like why is it that when someone of a different race harms our people we make it into an outrage oh this is horrible how can the police or this hispanic phobic uh, person do this to us but when it's a gang related crime of hispanic and hispanic or a hispanic person or a hispanic person we hear crickets we don't really hear people complaining about it i don't see hispanic people marching or demanding you know why our people are killing our people but hispanics have no problem marching for the blacks marching for the gays marching for the ukrainians other people but i don't see i don't see hispanics putting their people first because every other race ethnicity religion does it hispanics are the only people that do not do it and when there are people that are supposedly there for us when we need them to stand with us nobody's there because you know people are are tribal and i think hispanics need to align themselves in tribes and what i mean by tribes is that regardless if we are Euro-Hispanic, Afro-Hispanic, Indigenous Hispanic, Asian Hispanic, Mestizo Hispanic, Mulatto Hispanic, etc. What unites us as a collective is that we are Hispanic, we speak Spanish, our parents or grandparents come from Spanish from Spanish speaking countries, and we all are part of the Hispanidad, which is all of the Americas from Mexico to the Caribbean to Central America to South America to Spain to Andorra to Equatorial Guinea to uh, to the uh, Western Sahara all the way to the Philippines because we are all part of the same people Spanish blood runs through our veins regardless if we identify as white black Asian mestizo mulatto or a mixture of all of those we are all Hispanic and um, the tribalism among Hispanics needs to stop because at, at the end of the day, it uh, doesn't matter how much we don't like another uh, group of Hispanics, everybody else is going to group us being the same. So we need to work together as a collective to come up with proactive solutions in resolving our problems, social issues, mental issues, domestic violence issues, and primarily the issue of the lack of uh, ownership in Hispanic communities. Um, we need to boycott and demand that liquor stores, smoke shops, adult stores, marijuana dispensaries need to be kicked out or removed from our community because what they are exporting, the establishment, the system, they're poisoning our people. Our people are dying because of the vices that these places dispense to our people on a daily basis. You will not see too many liquor stores or vices in any places that are predominantly white, predominantly Asian, predominantly um, South Asian, or even you know Jewish. But you will always see it in Hispanic communities, and that we need to ask ourselves: why are we, why are we allowing it? Have we gotten so passive aggressive or conformist that we just don't care? We just want to just work uh, for the rest of our lives, working a slave wage and in a slave job where you know the employers they just they just don't care about the workers and whenever they feel like it, they'll just fire you, terminate you, and then you know you self destruct. Uh, you know, we need to have a little bit more self-respect for ourselves. And again, I mentioned it before. Education is very important and it, and it, and it is vital not only for the well-being of our people, but for the economic security of our people because it is the passport to the future. You know, we have, you know, the only thing that we have that we could survive is an education and a skill. And there are a lot of people that are coming from Latin America that are e that are living even in worse living conditions than they left their home countries, primarily because they don't have an education or a skill. 
And then you have Hispanic Americans that have been here for generations and they continue the cycle of generational poverty. And part of it has to do because they feel that education is not important, it's not part of our culture. That's, that's for white people, that's for Asian people, that's for rich people, that's not for us. And we need, to, we need to break that mindset because at the end of the day, education and the ones that have a skill are the ones that are making it, not the ones that work 20 jobs, 100 hours um, a week, and they're, and they're still broke. I know a lot of Hispanic people that are decent, productive, hardworking people, and they work five or six jobs, and you know what? They're still broke. They can barely cover their basic necessities, and they never advance. And their children, you know, have that, you know, uh, mentality, which is not good, which is a peon mentality. And then that cycle of generation passes on to the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. You know, if we want to move up, evolve, prosper, and thrive, we need to break that cycle of poverty. And it's not just getting a better job or moving to a different area. It's about changing your mindset, the way you think, the way you speak, the way you talk, putting your priorities in order, and most importantly, stop consuming alcohol, drugs, pornography, lowrider cars, and buying things that they don't need because those things come and go. But a business, an education, and a skill is forever. Take it from me. An education is not only vital for the future, but it's also will cause people to to respect you. If I didn't have the education that I have right now, most likely I wouldn't be speaking the way that I'm speaking. I would probably be with my hand down my pants, drinking, getting drunk, getting high, probably with a bunch of children I don't even take care of and being low class. Uh, when you are educated and change the way that you portray yourself to people, for the most part, people will treat you in a different light. You cannot demand respect when you don't earn it. That's the problem with many Hispanic people, especially those that are in the gangs. They feel that by joining a gang or joining a criminal empire, they're going to make the white man respect them. It doesn't. What it causes, it causes the white man to fear Hispanics. At the same time, it causes the white man to hate Hispanic people and want to kill them or want to harm them because why am I going to respect these people if they're slime, they're, they are just, they're just, they're just scum of society? You know, we really need to examine ourselves. We really do. I want to thank everyone for being on the podcast. I'm definitely going to be making more uh, a podcast, which is, you know, more solo. Because I think, um, you know, we need to have more advice and at the same time to be a conscience for those that don't have a conscience or those that don't have any type of guidance. So this is Enrique Sanchez of Spanish United Podcast signing off.